Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishnan. You know, while we were setting up, I was casually mentioning to Aditya that uh, we should have had uh, a security guard taking care of us uh, today during the shoot because the amount of camera gear and the lens that we have in the studio <laughs> worth a ton of money today. It's the 1DX Mark III, you have the R5, the R6 and uh, you know a few RF lenses all put together. You really require somebody taking care of us today. Anyway, jokes apart. Uh, well, we're going to be talking about EOS R5 today. All right. But before we actually kickstart the video, let me give you a brief introduction. Uh, the digital photography, I'm sure most of you know about this. Uh, digital photography came into fashion towards the end of 90s. Towards the beginning of 2000, we saw the digital technology overtaking the films and actually establishing it as a well accepted format for photography. And of course, they did not stop there and they continued exploring new possibilities. And then they came up with this idea of hybrid cameras, which basically meant uh, uh, one device that can shoot uh, both videos and stills. It happened during the middle of 2008. And if I remember right, it was the November of 2008. Eight, uh, Canon came up with the version 2 of their popular 5D called 5D Mark II with full HD recording capability. Now that really revolutionized the way you do filming. And if you remember all those conversations uh, which uh, you know people like uh, Phil Bloom and uh, Vincent Laforé all used to have, I used to literally sit hours together listening to them uh, in front of the you know computer uh, talking about the possibilities that this camera has provided to the photography or cinematography world and they were right and today we have a camera a hybrid camera that can shoot 8K. All right, we'll come to that later, but a little more about Canon. Canon probably is the only company that created uh, top rated cameras one after the other. Even during uh, the film camera era, they used to come after these, you know, really top notch quality cameras one after the other. Well, the 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, Mark IV, then your 1DX and the 1DC and the 1DX Mark III, everything has actually ruled the rooster. Well, the experience for Canon was a little different when they decided to enter the mirrorless world. Well, they tiptoed into it, they hesitated a while and they eventually when they entered with the EOS R, well, the loyalists, uh, of course, accepted it, but they were not exactly fully happy. Well, Canon being Canon, a hundred plus year old uh, camera company, kept on improvising. And now we have something called an EOS R5. Well, we got the EOS R5 in the studio somewhere around the launch uh, itself, but due to COVID, we could not get out, shoot or create a video for you. But it was a hot property at that time, hot both literally and figuratively. It was a hot property, but I'm not really unhappy that we could not do the video at that point in time because after two firmware upgrades, this camera is a different animal altogether. I would have come up with an entirely different opinion altogether if I had reviewed it at that time. But now, 
my not just mine anybody's review for that matter or feedback or reaction about this camera will definitely will be different because those two upgrades have done magic to this camera well after two two and a half months uh, from the launch and a million reviews on youtube doesn't really make sense going through you know each points and features of this camera all over again it can be a little boring but for the sake of a review let me read out or kind of tell you the big ticket uh, you know improvements or features so to speak the biggest one of course is 45 megapixel now 45 megapixel alone is not the biggest feature because there are cameras which has much more resolution 45 megapixels with 12 frames per second capability mind you 45 megapixel is a lot of information if you shoot raw that's ton of uh, data that needs to be transferred to the buffer and to be transferred into the uh, memory card now that's a lot of work for a small machine like this plus in the mirror up mode it can give you 20 frames per second now that feature is amazing and unparalleled at the time of this review i'm sure technology is improving tomorrow you will have something which is doing way better performance for sure you also have a five axis internal stabilization and if you have uh, lenses of course they have lenses which has got an optical image stabilization in combination with that a stabilized lens and an internal stabilization of this camera together can give you an eight stop advantage okay that's amazing probably the highest that is available as we speak anyone who has used a canon camera in the past will definitely swear by the autofocus capability of a canon camera it's been true from the film era onwards okay well even in the film era they had cameras with such wonderful capabilities like wherever you look the camera would focus there i mean even in the film era they had cameras like that now they have taken that game a couple of notches up with the mirrorless uh, well now the entire frame is filled with autofocus points a 45 megapixel image at 12 frames or 20 frames at a second with continuous autofocus capability is something that any photographer would uh, really really love to have in their arsenal uh, well what else it also has wi-fi capability which means you can shoot and remotely keep sending images to your assistant or wherever you want who's sitting uh, with a mobile device in the near vicinity send that image to them well in the earlier days of course you know you needed an additional attachment uh, to the camera which would have costed additional money of course high iso capability or low light sensitivity and high resolution these two things don't really go well together high resolution actually taxes the sensor a lot and the and the processor a lot and it at higher isos tend to introduce a lot of you know unwanted uh, uh, artifacts or noise or things like that in the sensor but in this camera the highest iso possible is 51200 and also 124000 uh, isos the proof of the pudding is in eating right so instead of uh, talking about it let we'll actually put that camera to a low light test and see how good the image will be at you know very high isos at very low light conditions well both the videographer and the uh, stills photographer is going to definitely like the fully articulated screen though some puritans believe that uh, you know a fixed or just a tilting uh, lcd was good enough but you know these are the days where you vlog a lot you create a lot of videos so for a hybrid camera i think this is a perfect uh, feature uh, well a few things at the rear have changed uh, the joystick is back uh, well other wheel and the other things are you know exactly in the familiar place well a major improvement is the introduction of uh, cf express cards 
um, in in this in the mirrorless. Of course, they had it in the One DX Mark III. Now they have it here too. That definitely is because of the 8K and the 4K high speed uh, video recording. And of course, it's got a dual card slot. The second card is an SD. And uh, I really like the grip. Okay, now, well, you know, again, I was not really was carried away by the uh, by the by the talk of mirrorless being a small compact uh, form factor. I I used to wonder why do you need a camera to be small? As a photographer who started photography way back in the film era, started working with you know uh, full-bodied uh, SLR cameras, always used to like good grip. Now, thankfully, it's back. Now, the mirrorless cameras, without an exception, have started really looking like a crop-bodied DSLR. And the biggest uh, improvement is in the grip. Now, if you want to improve this grip, you can always add a battery adapter. Two advantages, it will improve the grip, the ergonomics, your vertical shooting capability and also your battery power. You get additional battery power. Talking about battery, the battery that comes with it will give you about 480 frames. It will last as much as that, provided you don't do too much of, uh, you know, reviewing your images or playing back your videos. It will give you about 80 minutes of video. Now, this is what Canon claims. In real life, that can change a little bit this way or that way. Connectivity, of course, uh, it's got all the possible connectivity, including the Wi-Fi, which I told you. Um, the HDMI, for some reason, is still micro. Uh, and, of course, USB-C. Um, I would have really liked to see, uh, you know, a chunky, big, uh, full-size uh, HDMI port in this. I would have loved to see that. Anyway, uh, hopefully it is, it's kept for the next camera. I'm just joking. Uh, you have a mic, you have a headphone, and, uh, well, you have your battery charging port also. The biggest selling point of this camera is the 8K capability. As we do this video, this is the only camera that can give you an 8K at 30 frames. That too, and raw, internally recorded. That really takes this camera to another level. Who needs an 8K? I don't know. I don't need an 8K, but I'm sure 8K can be put to use if you if you use it very cleverly. It also can shoot 120 frames in 4K and 240 frames in Full HD. These are amazing features. I'm not saying other cameras don't have it, but in combination with that 8K capacity, which occasionally you're going to take the benefit of, this actually can be called a monster camera. Looking at the features of this camera, I can very, very clearly say that this is meant for a true professional. I am certain that the commercial photographer, the commercial advertising photographer will definitely like this. And of course, the wedding photography market was waiting for something like this because like I told you, the EOS R they thought was a little half-baked. Uh, so this is something that they're going to lap up. And of course, the EOS R6, we're going to talk about it in the upcoming video, but this one is about R5. And then of course, all those Puritan photographers, uh, not exactly Puritan, probably the, the immensely rich uh, enthusiast who would like to go on these wildlife adventures shooting animals and birds they're going to love this too along with the battery pack and one of those long lenses with the adapter of course and they're going to love this camera 45 megapixel they can crop very comfortably into it and create those mind-blowing wildlife images too Okay, why am I talking and talking and talking? Let's get into a situation. Let's see if we can put together certain situations which resembles, let's say, a post-wedding shoot or a commercial shoot and see how this guy works both in the stills and the video department. We'll talk about the features during the shoot too. And we headed out to a quaint village almost 40 kilometers away from Pune. 
I just carried the R5 and the 2870. I thought will be used by majority of the R5 users. And of course, we had the usual suspects as company. Aditya Raj and Karan Raj of uh, Territory. Of course, Aditya Raj is also a photographer. You know him from uh, the 1DX Mark III review. Well, they recently got married and I thought we will do a post-wedding sort of shoot with the R5. Well, as you can see, the light was very low and the weather was bad. So we did not use any flashes. Of course, we did not have enough people also. And when the sun decided to show up occasionally, we managed to grab the golden rim light too. And then we headed to this unusual and amazing house, hand built by this amazing couple from reused materials. Well, meet Vikram and Kaushalika, who are nature lovers, ecologists and dog breeders. Well, we shot again with the R5 and the 2870 combination with the light that is available in the house and as you can see there wasn't much but the r5 came out in flying colors both in stills and video what i really liked was in the way in which the in body stabilization worked like a magic both in stills and in video as you can see i shot the entire sequence handheld And of course, we also go to test a little bit of uh, weather resistant capacity of this camera too. These hound dogs run in an excess of 45 plus kilometers. I was shooting that with again 2870 at the long end of the lens at f2. Well, I was really surprised the way in which the camera held onto the focus and followed the focus throughout. And of course, we also shot some low light shots and no light shots. The results are in front of you to see. see the video.
Well, for the second time in row, bad light and rain spoiled our shoot. But we continued the shoot in the studio with the help of a French photographer, Jayant, who shoots a lot of catalogs, portfolios, beauty and uh, jewelry. Well, he is a Canon user. He uses a Canon DSLR for his uh, catalogs and portfolios and for his beauty and jewelry he has a high-end medium format digital camera he has never used a mirrorless in fact he was resisting getting a mirrorless camera for a long time but uh, when he realized that the r5 is in the studio he wanted to come over and test it out well, I could see it from his face how excited he was to see the results. Well, when he left, I think he was a changed man. I think he wanted to go for the R5. One of the main reason what he told me was that now he can avoid carrying two formats. Hmm, wise choice, I say. And of course, we were really lucky to get some footage from uh, Rafik Elias, an amazing photographer, an award-winning filmmaker and my photography guru. This is what he had to say. This is the last day of a documentary film that I've been shooting for several months. And the entire last sequence I shot on the Canon R5. The firmware update gave me all the breathing space that I needed. I could now shoot 4K of course, as long as I wished, but I could also shoot 4K fine and even 8K when I thought I might need those shots. The premium flagship RF lenses are indeed unapologetically heavy. They make the camera somewhat front heavy. But once you reorient yourself and decide to hold the camera lens first with a bit of support of the other hand or the body, you become very comfortable with it and the entire unit becomes a very organic, ergonomic whole. For a Canon user, it's a smooth transition to the R5 mirrorless. The menus are familiar, they're simple, they're fluid. And even if you're not a Canon user, it would be a very smooth transition in my opinion. I do miss the DSLR body, the DSLR form factor, even though it was heavy. But then I missed film when I went digital. And I missed the rangefinder cameras when I went to DSLRs in the first place. It is a march of time, and I have learned over the years not to resist it, but to go with the flow. That's my two cents of wisdom, or lack of wisdom, rather. Well, as they say, better be late than never. Well, the R5 video took the maximum amount of time because of COVID and lockdown and lack of availability of people and bad weather and just sheer lack of inspiration. Anyway, we are very happy that we now have finished and we have fantastic footage to showcase to you. What else? I think I can go on and on and on, but I need to end this video. But I think this camera um, can be considered as the Ferrari among uh, the mirrorless camera, at least for the time being. But few things uh, may make it even a better uh, Ferrari, so to speak, is the stop dial. Reading the stop dial in both the straight and the reverse mode, both was a little difficult in low light conditions. Second is about uh, coupling the Sport AF and the Sport AE together uh, to one point. It required 
a multiple level um, custom setup to do it i think it should come by default the third thing is that uh, i wish the spot af could be moved instantly instead of going through one level of you know pressing this button to activate it first and then uh, moving the spot af using this toggle switch well I am not a full-time Canon user. We have lots of different brands available in the studio. We keep using it, but this R5 came to us about uh, about a month and a half back and I, ever since I've been using it. Uh, well, the things I really liked are the build quality one. Second is the optical quality. The speed in which this camera was locking the focus and staying on with the subject and the quality of each still and the video footage. What else do you need in a camera? Well, all those things that the internet world was talking about against this camera, like heating issues and the 8K and whatever did not really bother me at all uh, well we did not shoot 8k to begin with i don't know how many people will require 8k but if you need it of course it's available we shot most of the footage in 4k uhd we tried all speeds ah, let me tell you that 120 at 4k uhd is available only in ntsc mode not available in pal uh, that's not an issue because you don't really require 120 most of the time we shot the footage in canon log and i must tell you that the quality the integrity of that footage was fantastic i was doing in camera exposure reading and a simple lift gain and gamma corrections gave us was brilliant footage to start off with and uh, this camera has an additional video feature called the HDR PQ which can be used in case if you are producing content for to be viewed in very high quality HDR viewing panels what else of course the, the image size both in stills and video are very big so you must be ready with uh, lots of memory cards and lots of uh, you know storage in your studio well other than that uh, the things that the internet world really talked against this camera did not really bother us barring these uh, few things i think this camera like I said, is really on the top of its game. And anyone who invests in a camera like this, I think will be able to enjoy that for a much longer period than uh, you usually do. Because these days cameras come and go and the real life of a body um, is not really much. But I think it'll be different in the case of Canon R5. Bye for now.